If you have clicked on this video to watch and you are someone that loves short game or you really need to work on your short game, you have definitely come to the right place because I'm about to be joined by one of the best in the business. He's going to be talking me through simple fixes to the most common habits most golfers have in a full unedited lesson right here. This is the glorious Tavistock short game area at Woburn near Milton Keynes in the UK. Short game is something historically has been a massive strength of mine, but some point along the way in the last few years, I've lost a bit of my confidence with it and it's become a bit of a liability. So if short game is important to you or it's something you really need to work on, sit back, relax, because this, I guarantee you, is going to provide so much value to your golf game. Okay, tell me about your short game. My short game, I would rank my short game as I still would like to attach that it's one of the strengths of my game. Mm -hmm. However, I've definitely lost my mojo with it a little bit compared to what it was. Mm -hmm. I would feel like I miss a lot of greens because I'm a very bad iron player. Mm -hmm. However, I would tend to save that with my short game. I'm a pretty good putter. I'm fairly confident in my putting, but I'm making a lot of par putts. Mm -hmm. A lot of par putts because my short game's rescuing me. Um, my short game, ha basically, maybe two or three years ago, I just had this chronic case of the chunks. I'd come out anything from 30 yards to 50 yards. Traditionally, I'd know it was a bad technique. Um, actually, do you know when it first happened? Was at the Kingdom with Andy and Piers. We were sitting there. At Reynolds. Um, uh, at uh, the Kingdom in Carlsbad. Okay, Carlsbad. And I just started chunking everything. Yeah. And I've always done the massive hinge and hold. Yeah, yeah, right? sure. Okay. And I'd always used to chip around the greens with a 52 degree mm -hmm. uh, hinge and hold, but I would like, I would be like here, right? And I would just be dynamite. It would just mm -hmm. go whoop, whoop, and it would be like tappings, tappings, tappings. For whatever reason, I started doing that with other clubs and they'd just be chunk, chunk, chunk. And I, you know, I just, it flustered me massively. Yeah. And then I'm thinning it and then it would sort of creep in. It would tend to creep in more in the winter months. Mm -hmm. So when the ground gets softer, softer yeah. I just chunk it more. And then all, instead of walking up to a shot around the green and thinking oh, I'm about to hold this and be a hero, I'm thinking, am I going to hit the green? Like, yeah. I'm no longer thinking about trying to hold Jets it. I'm thinking mines. about yeah. contact. I'm yeah. just, all my natural feel is gone. Yeah. So I feel like I'm on the road back, but I feel like it's a long road. So I need <laughs> need a check. We need we need some work. Yeah, definitely. So sometimes you know when you're um, playing uh, in America, like you know, say it suddenly came on, it's a very different type of grass out yeah. there, and that was probably it where it was getting caught in maybe I don't know, it was a Bermuda grass. Yeah. It was getting caught a lot more. So and then it gets in the mind, of course. Yeah. And the soft conditions, like you say, it's probably uh, just made it show up a bit more. So what club have you got there? So this is a 58 degree, which and is what I will. Now, these days, for a good few years now, will tend to be my go-to from anything up to maybe 40 yards. So you generally sit to a 58 for most shots around the green, would you say? Yes. Do you vary it at all? Do you ever yes. go down to a less loft? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if I've got a lot of green to work with, I will punch and run it with a wedge or a 50 degree. Mm -hmm. um, I'm quite comfortable with that shot. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm answering, I'm asking myself while we're talking about it, why did I stop using a 52 degree? Because I used it everywhere. Mm. I would just go right back at the stance and I would just, you know, like grip down it and just like play that little shot. And I don't know why I stopped doing it. Um, well, it might have been the fact that because you were getting progressively further back, obviously yeah. I was just making it stronger and stronger, so yeah. the wave off setting is a bit more loft. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's quite instinctive, the game of golf, isn't it? Yeah. It's the reason you'd have done it, it would have been instinctive, kind yeah. of little reason. So, so no, I do, I do mind, I don't mind a pinch, punch 50, and run. Yeah. Yep. I'm quite happy with a punch and run, and to be honest, if I'm really honest with myself, when it's been going wrong, I've, I've run away to the punch and run a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably punching and running when I probably shouldn't mm -hmm. because Just to I- Just try and get a contact. Yeah. Rather than and, the right and, and then I'm passing a lot more than I used to as well around the green. Okay, let's just kind of work. Right, we've got a bit of green to work. We've got 20 yards here. Okay. Whatever club you would normally use from here. Okay. Right, and we're gonna, we're gonna give this a- So I really want to hit this club, okay. but I probably right now wouldn't. Okay. I probably right now would go, go to a 50. I mean, I'm visualizing this, like I'd walk out, I'd look at a landing spot and I'd see it hitting maybe two thirds of the way there, rolling out and then breaking left. And I would basically put it on the back of my stance. And my only thought here is keeping this wrist towards the target. So I'd just be like. Yeah. And just let it run down there. Yeah. So it was a little bit late, little thin that, wasn't it? Okay, yeah. So that's yeah, yeah. Up. That was a better one. Good. Uh, sometimes also fine, but this type of shot, I would tend to pull it a bit. Okay. And there would always be a pull. So I, because of that, I've done it for so long, I would probably almost aim more right, expecting to pull it. Just don't allow for it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's almost a subconscious thing that yeah. I've been doing. 
Okay. But that's sort of how I yeah, okay. Look, can play I just, that Before shot. we just get into this, I want to see you play some softer ones as well. Okay. Right? We're going to go down this runoff area. Okay. I just want to see how you play that before we look at anything else. Right, we're going to go for that same pin, but okay. I need to carry this like three yards on the green. Okay. okay. So you've got a lot less green. I just want to see how you adapt and play this. So basically, right now, I'm feeling anxious. Okay. And I never used to be. Because you're on a little bit of a wet ground as well, and yep. there's a slight upslope. Yep. So what you were saying about earlier about your, your heavy tendency, that should be alarm bells ringing. This is the it. sound out there ringing. Yeah, like right now, if I'm playing in an event and I'm trying to be as simple as possible, I'm potentially even thinking, can I bump and run this? Stick it in the bank a bit. And I know I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Like what I, what, I, what I feel like I want to play is almost like a really super confident one. Like that. Mm -hmm. I know it's in there, but I'm scared. Mm -hmm. I'm really scared to play it. So and if I sat, if I sat there and done it like 20 minute warm up, I'd be more confident. But I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a tightrope of confidence with this shot. Like one, like one of them, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh god. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we call a sort of rode up the face a little bit there, yep. though, didn't I? Okay. Yeah. Just a bit smooth that. One Lose more. a load of consistency. Because the other thing I could do here is I'd feel like I'd almost like play it like a. A little sort of that, hooky, stabby thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be my real yeah. safety one. I'm probably more comfortable playing that shot. Um, I don't, I don't think it's going to be as good an outcome, but I'm probably feeling like I, I know that that's a little bit more. Yeah, um, so these little stabby divots yeah, is what you recognise quite a lot. Well, if yeah. you get the ball first, it's fine, but you just got absolutely zero margin for error. And I think that's where we could get you a bit more margin for error. So and I think that's where. Think perfect. I would get away with it in the UK grass. Yeah, if you did that out of the more exotic grasses abroad, yeah. that ball's going three feet. You're gone. Okay, and then, then you're, you're going to chip yeah. again, and then it gets in there. And I, I, it took me a long while to realise that playing in the Middle East as well a little bit, I would just think it was all me. And it obviously is me, yeah. but I was blaming me more than the conditions. It was more the IQ side of things. It was yeah. actually reading the line, understanding how this bounce needs to work, work through the grass. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. The, the grass condition is absolutely huge. Yeah, yeah. And the way you're doing it, you've got a very typical British short game. Mm. We need to make it a bit more versatile a bit more and, continental. and, a, lot, and a, lot, a lot safer. Yeah. <laughs> right, OK. OK, if you've clicked on this video, you're clearly very serious about your golf and you want to get better. Well, let me tell you, I found something that's going to really help both of us improve our golf. Now, look. It's a rangefinder. You've seen these before. Some of you maybe not, but most of you will have seen these before. But this rangefinder here from Canon does something that I've never seen a rangefinder do before ever. So this is the Canon PowerShot Laser Rangefinder. First of all, look how small that is. Look how small that is. That literally fits in your pocket. So, so easy. It's so lightweight. And before I tell you about this feature, this one does that no other rangefinder I've ever seen has done. As well as that, it's obviously from a massive, massive brand in Canon. You can just feel the quality in this thing. The accuracy is a joke. It's got that lock-on technology that allows you to pinpoint, make sure you're not accidentally zapping the trees behind the pin. We've all done that, you get the wrong number, you're two, three clubs out. This thing locks onto the pin, absolutely nailed on it. It vibrates when it's done so. It's a rechargeable battery, you plug straight into here, charge it up, lasts a good three or four rounds, I found at least, and I use this thing a lot. And because it's a Canon, you've got that crystal clear visual inside. It uses actual camera technology. You're looking on a screen, which allows you to zoom in and out so you can get close up. If you're like trying to zap the back of a bunker, you can look at the bunker, press the zoom button. But what is this special feature, you ask? Well, this thing has got a built-in camera. You can record video and stills inside this. So look, if you're in the market for a new rangefinder, I think you might have just found it. Link down below to learn more about the Canon PowerShot Golf Laser Rangefinder. Yes, please. Um, the way you're doing it, I mean, obviously it worked well in the past and you, you are, I mean, there's a lot of good things there. You've got a lot of good things. You move quite well in terms of the rotation. I, can, okay. I do like it. But the way in which you're setting up with that ball quite significantly outside your back foot is obviously going to give you a lot of forward lean in the shaft. Mm. Okay, so that's probably why you, it's, it's going to steering towards like a 58 because it's dynamically you're taking so much off, okay, in that, uh, with that lean. But the problem you've got there is you've just basically taken all of the bounce off. Mm. You see that? So clubs are designed with a bounce angle. So this one's got uh, 10 degrees. So you can see the gap between the leading edge there and my finger is 10 degrees, right? So that's 10 degrees if the shaft was straight up and down, but you've got around about a 30 degree shaft lean address. Mm. So really, you're, you might as well scribble it out and put minus 20, right? right? Now, if you're absolutely on it, which it sounds like you were for a long time, like you were really timing it well, and you're getting that club on the ball, you can get a mm. result. You can get that strike, okay? But often you come out a little flat and a little hot, but you can chip that way. But the problem is you've got to be perfect. Yeah. You've got absolutely zero 
margin for error and it only takes a couple of bad shots you sow the seed so what i think we've got to do with your short game your chipping is leave that shot in the locker like it is a shot mm. it is a mm. shot okay it would be more of a shot from like a bear lie or when you're up mm. against a bit of a collar or mm. something so it is a shot um but we've got to make it a little bit more versatile and, and in terms of a lot more forgiving so we need to use the bounce better. We're going to get you in a more orthodox setup position and we're going to leave your rotation because your rotation is quite nice, but we're going to see if we can start to brush the ground again okay. and get away from these little yeah. stabby divots, okay? And get a bit more finesse and spin on your ball flight as well. The, the one SOS I went to, so I, I, the, I've never had a short game lesson before. I've only really ever had stuff on my real critical areas. and But when I had it really bad, like, three or four years ago. It's the guy called Lee Cox, you know Lee Cox at the mm. show? And he gave me this one thing that got me out of the doldrums of chunking everything. And he said, try and chunk it. Mm. And he said, use the bounce and try and chunk it. And I couldn't chunk it. Mm. It was the weirdest thing in the world. The, the drill was to take my 58 and try and hit the ground here, but mm -hmm. hit it shallow. Mm. And I was like, it feels so weird. And I lost a lot of touch with it but I never chunked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, basically, I've just, it's making me use the bounce, right? Exactly, and it's understanding, actually, you want to create a, a, a flat spot, really, that runs from three inches behind the band ball to a three yeah. inches through the ball. Yeah. So you want your club to run on the ground more. Now, you don't do that. Because you're here, mm. that's always going to create a steeper ang angle of attack. Yeah. Okay, and you can, you can do that. You've got to stay super wide and super shallow and clip it that way, but from here, you're, you're always going to tend, to tend to sort of pick it up and drive it down. So mm. we want to, just in slow motion, we want to feel like the club is going wider and it's sliding. And you want to get yeah. that noise there where the, mm. the club is sliding. So I, even if I hit that two inches behind like I did yeah, there, it's, yeah. still, it's still a contact, you know. But from here, I'm already starting to feel a bit nervous, yeah. okay, because I've got to be perfect. Yeah. And I promise you, standing over a chip shot, knowing you don't need to be perfect, is a much better yeah, method approach. Yeah, I'm with right? you. I'm with so you. Let's, get you, let's get you set up a little Am bit Am I staying with the 50 here? Let's, uh, let's stay with that for now, yeah. That's fine. Now, okay, right. Ball position now is going to move just, just sort of, we'll, we'll keep it just back of centre. Okay. Minimal forward lean, okay? okay? So we're looking for that point in the middle of the grip to be really in the middle of the ball. Okay. Okay. The same sort of shot. I quite like your rotation. We'll see what that changes now. Just feel like your triceps okay. are going to attach a little bit more, okay? okay? Just a little bit more inward. Okay. I'm just going to test your grip pressure. So don't cheat. Give me your normal grip pressure. Okay. And I'm going to give you a number out of 10. Okay, so you're, you're about a seven, okay. right? If ten's as tight as it gets, zero yeah. isn't holding it. You want to be about a three. Okay. So wow, yeah. that's more like a three. You feel that? Yeah, I That's going to give you a bit more flow as well. Okay. okay. I feel like doing that, I want to hold it further down. Fine. Feel comfortable. So straight away, you've hit that behind the ball, but it's yeah. slid better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a much better contact sound, isn't it? Light grip, wide, and rotate. It's okay. really tricky to commit to the light grip. Mm-hmm. I think I, I mean, you see the state of my gloves, I grip it too hard massively. All right, better noise already. Yeah, yeah, well done. Good. I would definitely recommend just getting a rod when you're practicing on this to begin with and... For a ball position? Yeah. yeah. You're just gonna, if it's if gonna you're be... left on your own, that yeah. thing's going to keep creeping back. Okay. So get it there. Just back of centre. Very good. Now you do you do pull the club a little bit, okay, and you do get a little bit wide in your arc, okay. So what I mean by that is, you're good here, you're much wider here now, which is great. I like that, and the ball position is much much more in a friendlier position. But you do have a little bit of a of a pull mm. here, mm. and you do get a little bit wide here, mm. right? And that's why you get that slightly late contact. And it's been here a bit, isn't it? Yeah. So that's why I'm trying to encourage you to feel like you keep your triceps and elbows okay. a little bit more attached. So when you come through your arc is going to be a little bit narrow with the hands. Which is okay, going so the hands close to my legs. Yes, exactly. And it's going to encourage a little bit more release of the club head, which is really what we're talking about here. And if you've seen my, okay. any of my stuff, yeah. I talk about different release points. Yeah, so, do, yeah. so really, you want to feel like the, the butter grip's pointing more towards the left hip for this shot in the finish, whereas you get a little okay. this way because of your old setup. So I've just got to turn the, flip, the club through. Just feel like it's releasing yeah. more, feel like it's swinging more. And that's why it's important to grip it a little bit lighter, so the yeah. tighter you hold it, particularly in transition, it's going to drag release, too much. Right? Yeah. Okay. Let's go through the whole thing here. So that's good, nice and relaxed, nice and wide in the takeaway. And then that's the bad one. You mm. feel like you almost yeah, like yeah, lag yeah. it a little bit and you pull, yeah. which sends your hands yeah, too far this way. Hidden, yeah. yeah. So you want to feel like it's there, and then in transition it's as light and as smooth as possible, and then it much narrower here. Okay. And then look, the butter grip's now pointing at the hip. Okay. Okay. Do it even narrower than that. Let's try it again. Let me stand here, and I want you to make sure your hands aren't going to touch my grip. Okay. So it's going to feel a little shorter. There you go. Does that feel different more in there? Yeah. Good. Much better.
much closer. You can't mm. let you keep these elbows into mm. you. Well, Seb, that's pure. Well done. Releasing the club. Can you feel the bounce mm. working more? Oh, yeah, definitely. It just feels like you almost don't feel the impact. I'm so, I'm so yeah. used to feeling the impact because yeah. it's... Well, you've always kind of hit the ball first or tried yeah. to, right? Uh, now we're actually saying, look, if you hit the ball first, fine, but really we're looking to that to slide a little bit more behind the ball so the club's on the ground for longer. So that wasn't perfect, but look at the result. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, let me show you. So you stand down the line. Mm -hmm. Like your alignment's fine. That's obviously the obvious place. Look, the ball slightly above your feet. So that would okay, count yeah. for some of it. Mm. But as you go through, because you're letting the club travel mm. here too much, okay, that's where that pull's coming from. So you want to feel like you're opening up and just keeping that club face a little bit more okay. down the line there. So okay. I can still feel like I'm keeping the face at target. Yeah. More, okay. No, you don't want to feel like with this with oh, That's this what release. I'm doing. I almost feel like I'm doing yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. You don't, oh, want to, okay. you don't want to release the club and kind of flip the face. That's what I was doing, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so just, so you're releasing the shaft, but you feel like you're still keeping a bit more uh, of that, okay. that okay. loft on the club. Okay, as you go right, through. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. How's that feel? Yeah, it feels nice. Good. Would you say that's fairly a good club selection decision here for this type of shot? Yeah, it is, because it's the last, what, 15 feet is uphill. The so you biggest, need to get it running a bit. Biggest fault I see in amateurs is using too much loft on a shot like this and play a nice shot, but then it spins up into the upslope yeah. and it's like really frustrating, isn't it? So yeah. what, what you've got to do, most important thing around the greens and what people can massively improve is just try and predict what will happen before it happens. Mm. So a lot of people will play a shot, it will spin up, comes up short and then they'll say quite that spun a lot well it was always going to spin a lot because you're using a lofty club into an upslope mm. so you've got to say well if i land it there with that spin what will it do if i land it there with that flight what will it do you've mm. got to ask yourself questions yeah this is the problem i've been paralyzed to ask those questions because i'm yeah. thinking about strike totally and whereas before i'm thinking right how do i get this ball close or in the yeah. hole and i'm thinking what do i need to do as opposed yeah. now i'm thinking what not to do yeah, exactly so it's like an internal mindset which is you're wrapped up in what you what you what you're doing what you've got to do to get the strike and then there's the external mindset which is probably where you were in, mm. in the good old days when you were you know really confident and you were trying to see the shot you were painting the picture in your mind you saw what the ball needed to do and how it would react and how it would get there and how it would break but then you few bad contacts, you, you think, well, there's no point doing all that. I've got to try and get the contact. Get it on the green first. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but once you start getting the technique, which you're starting to, now you'll start visualising it, you'll start yeah. seeing it. And you'll move away from this kind of internal, wrapped up technical mindset into what have I got to do to hold this chip or get it close, right? Okay, let's But you have to that. predict it. So yeah, start looking at where, where, you know, maybe where you want to land the ball yeah. and where it's going to break from, because there's a bit of right to left here as well. I'm going to see it. That first two balls on the right feel like a nice little gateway to me. Mm -hmm. Very good. I mean, Very that's good. stone dead. So it's amazing when you start painting the picture. Oh Tiger God, Woods talks about it all crazy, the time. It? If you start painting the picture of the shot, your instinct for a good athlete, someone who plays a game, your instinct will take over and do it. Do you know what? The, do you know what's crazy? And I say this, and it's a very high risk strategy, right? And it bites me plenty of times. But I'm telling you, the net result is significantly better. I'll say things to my playing partners, like, I'm going to make yeah, okay, this, no, right? I and mean, I yeah. say it because yeah. it makes me want to do it more. Yeah. When you don't do it, they give you loads of stick, right? Yeah. But do you know how many more times I make it? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. here, and if I'm really playing someone, I'll walk up there and I'll take the flag out and they're like, big time, get over <laughs> yourself, right? It won't go in, but it'll be a lot closer if I didn't do that. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's something in my mind that's tricking it to be like, show time, yeah. show off time. And, I'm, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking about, do it. Same with the putt, I'll be like, I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this. There's one trick, I've said it on camera before as well, I think. Not to do with short game, but it's linked. If I've got a bogey, a par saving putt, right? I convince myself, you've already deserved the bogey for that poor shot you just hit. Now is your birdie chance. And I'll tell myself, right, so you've made a bogey, mm. but this is now a chance to get it straight back. Mm. And I'll go with a birdie chance putt, on a, a birdie chance mindset on a par putt. I'll make it so many more times than I don't. Otherwise it's like, don't make bogey, don't make bogey, don't yeah, make bogey. Yeah, yeah. And I said, I'm yeah. making, make the birdie. Yeah. And then you've never dropped the shot. And it's the exact yeah. same. Just and nice the amount of times I do it, I can't, I can't agree with that anymore. Is like having the right mindset. So I love doing things like that, like almost putting pressure on myself. No, which, I totally agree. In a weird because way. What you're doing now is painting the picture and you get, you're almost trying to have that caddy player conversation that you hear on TV all yeah. the time with yourself. With yourself, yeah. But yeah. you're doing it with your playing partners, yeah, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But again, you're saying like you're just vividly painting the picture. This is what I'm going to do. It's fine. 
far more positive. Yeah, I agree. You know, you're not wrapping yourself in negative stuff. I do it all the time in the short game schools. I spend the morning kind of working on technique. Then we have this really nice challenge where they, they pair up and they play a little match play. But they've got to say which release they're going to use, which club they're going to use, and what shot they're going to play, yeah. and where they're going to land. Yeah, it. yeah. And it's yeah. amazing how they transfer all this learning into actually thinking. Yeah. I just, I, I just, I, I would say it all the time as well. If I, I, I've, I've got not a very good, technically good golf swing, and don't I hear it enough from you guys? Jesus Christ. <laughs> but it is. When I play well, I play better on links golf. When I'm not hitting like seven iron, 150 shot. Yeah, I'm like shots. feeling something. Yeah. Like all my lowest scores are all on links golf course. It's no coincidence mm. for me. I also don't think it's a coincidence that it's on firmer ground mm -hmm. where I'm a lot shallower into the ball with my irons. I think that really helps me. Um, and all the time I will feel, and I'll sometimes call it out, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And it's no joke that it happens yeah. More than it does. So when you get those grotty days, you know, it's like blowing 40 miles yeah. an hour. You, you, you're, everyone's like, doesn't want to go out, but you're, you're just licking your yeah. lips thinking, here we go. Because it's like people who are actually good at golf struggle with no bad conditions. I'm not good. I just score. <laughs> so I'm just like this little weasel that doggedly <laughs> makes Comes in with 35 points. Exactly. Score. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. it suits me. Bad days suit me enormously. Enormously. So ball position. Just don't let it creep back. You see, you got tense. Just, just keep it on yeah, that. Yeah, That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So keep triceps connected. So we're just talking about going wide back, letting the club flow and just making sure that loft stays on a little bit more, which helps better. So it's going down yeah. the line. Yeah, that's good. But that's the big thing. You feel like the, the connection is there a little bit more. And this will be yeah. a good drill for you, actually. If you put the club against your hip there and, and grip okay, it yeah. down by the ferrule, that's it. And just make a move back so it stays on the hip. Don't let it come ah, off the hip. That's it. Now, okay. when you go through, ah. I want you to feel like you come through there and everything matches up. But you can see how you're You've got the connection between your chest, yeah. your hands and the club, and it's all there. That is Whereas nice before, throw, you it? see, you'd have been more this way. Oh, 100% like I'll be out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So do I, I always feel like you never do what you're thinking you're going to do. So is it always good to have like a really exaggerated thought? I almost feel like it's like here. Yeah, exactly. Because you, cause you go, you've historically gone this way too long. Yeah. Like you've gone wide and you've driven. So if you can just keep that on the hip, you go back and you come through, it's going to give you a feel of the connection and also the the hand path going slightly more left and actually a little bit closer to you. Mm. Because that little, the, the heavy one and that thin one are actually in the same family mm. that you've been getting, right? So, you know, that, that drive you want's the same thing, we just get a little bit late. So just this feel, just make it connect a little bit better and keep the arc a little closer. So that's good. Nice and relaxed though. Batsman, said, Batsman just, just got, got a little short there. That's yeah, just the feel thing. Gotta get the feel, yeah. So connect your eyes again. Think about where you're going to land it. See the first bounce, see the second bounce. Let's try and get into that mindset we talked about. It's amazing. Like, but have I'll... you noticed now the ball's coming off softer? Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. Which is a good yeah, thing. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. short game should be soft on yeah, purpose, yeah, yeah. right? It should be. I, I was thinking so much about that feeling there. Yeah. I almost was, could feel this was going to come into my groin <laughs> right, during the yeah. swing. Obviously, it's not going to do that, right? No. Shouldn't do. I'm really exaggerated. Yeah, if that's it a does. Good inside if you yeah. That's it. So you're still extending the backswing away from here. These, these are the muscles sort of ignite yeah. there, okay? So okay. you're getting some width with it. Okay. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, it's just on a nice like natural one. line, neutral line, isn't it? Yeah. That'd be the other thing that sometimes I would find as well is that um, unless I'm really deliberate, I would definitely find I come up short longer than I do long. Mm -hmm. Um as a, is that quite an atypical thing that people would? Well, if, well, we're making, yeah, most people are short, yeah. 100%. I would say most people chip with too much loft and it's been too much, which is you, what you were doing. And, and the thing, when, because you were getting good contacts before with this, obviously that is going to stun the ball quite a lot. Mm. So you can create a lot of check there. Mm. Um, I think if you can start to chip with a little bit less loft, I think it's going to make your technique better mm. because it's going to force you to release mm. the club better. Mm. Um, and you're going to see the ball rolling out like a putt a lot more. That's what I like. I love seeing that. I, I know. I know it's the champagne shot you see in that spin. And everyone loves that, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. But really, you try to shoot low score possible. Oh, and I'm trying to remind that to everyone that plays. You try to shoot yeah. low score. As far as I'm aware, there are no extra prizes for playing these spinners. No. Okay, you're trying to shoot low score. This is the other big thing that not necessarily just in content, but like in general. And I've got a lot of friends of mine in the football world who are now getting to the age where they're really getting into golf and they're getting really competitive with it and all the rest of it. And they're right at the very beginning of their journey. And I say to them, like, deadpan, and people think I'm like, take it too seriously. I'm like, right, do you actually want to get better? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, right, what do you do when you practice? Oh, no. I'm like, why are you hitting driver all yeah. the time? Like, yeah. you, this will be your thing, right? I'm like, you're shooting 120, there's only 18 tee shots, four of them are par three, you're hitting 14 maximum drivers, mm -hmm. less than 14% of your mm -hmm. shots. You should be, you're hitting 80% of your shots within 50 yards of the green. Yeah. You should be doing 95% of your practice. Like, 
like obviously when you get to be a very good player like the pros it's all about approach to the green and you know how quick you can get it from 200 yards right but for me until you're like less than a maybe 12 handicap yeah I think people should only do short games. Yeah, I totally agree. And 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 if you think about just in terms of like learning the skill, like you know yourself, like trying to change your swing, like and, and trying to make true improvements is really difficult. Yeah, and it yeah, takes yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're really trying to change your DNA. It's very difficult to try and change your golf swing. Yeah. But short game, you can change it really in an hour. Yeah, yeah. And if yeah. you get the right right coaching, the right technique, and you can start working on it, you can revolution short game in such a short space yeah. of time and become a much better short game handicap player yeah. than a long game. Long game is a grind. You've got to work yeah, on your yeah, long yeah. game. Short game, you can get it real quick. And um, there's no reason anyone with a bit of skill cannot aim to become a scratch short game player. I agree. Hey, so it's there, isn't it? Right. Like, how much le less have you got to figure out from here to here yeah. than you have yeah, up yeah, here, yeah. right? Sure. I would say if you were treating it like a YouTube channel, like a business, and you're investing resources and time into improving the revenue and the revenue is your handicap, then you should be putting that time and effort purely into short game, really, mm. at, the, at the beginning, because the output is going to be yeah. so much greater. Yeah. You're going to go and destroy your mates yeah. if you're playing off anywhere between 14 and 28, 36, if you go and practice short game, because I bet you none of them are, right? <laughs> none of them are. So the other thing I would love to come on to later is, because I've got a few, but I'd love to get yours. Yeah. What are the best short game games? Because I feel a lot of that issue comes down to the fact that they're getting their endorphin hit from whacking drives yeah. and that hit is what's the addiction yeah. so uh, not that's obviously important we want them to come back and keep playing golf but if we can replicate that like, i'm very fortunate i think that i probably i say this all the time as well someone says to me do you want to go and play nine holes i'd be like would you want to just go and do a short game for an hour and a half like just play games go and sit down here with three balls each try and get up and down play little games and drills i'll get as much benefit in uh, much enjoyment out of that other people don't and i i think because i've developed these little games against myself or against my pals where you get, I get the same enjoyment of actually going and playing nine holes, 18 holes, but by the end of it, under pressure, in a competitive environment, I've hit 80 chips, whereas they've played nine, they've hit six. Yeah, you know what totally. I mean? And I think it's very important you structure your practice. Like what we're doing here is just like technical block practice, yep. right? Yep. It's just repetition, because we need to build some yep. technique in there. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this for the whole session. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, particularly as you get more competent with it. Um, so absolutely right. If you can build competition into your competition practice yeah. into your practice, where you, there's an output, like you're actually um, you've got a scoring game, or you've got something where actually you need to, you've got some ownership on your score, and then you can try and beat that score next time. That's where you can get that endorphin hit, like you said, and that's actually it. do that. So it's very important that you don't just. I mean, most people when they come down this fantastic short game area here, um, they just tend to hit the same shot over and over again. Yeah, but yeah. if you can use it where you do some random practice, different lies and then put some competition games in it's so much better in terms yeah. of the output of your practice i'll have to get some totally drills great. and games off you later yeah, on we'll then. do that okay it's good nice just lengthen that back swing just 10 percent okay. how did that feel that was much better oh, lovely so if you just give yourself that extra 10 percent in back swing what it's going to give you is a smoother transition because your instinct is such a powerful thing in, in, in sport but in golf in, in particular so if you get a little bit short you're gonna you're gonna mm. tend to grab it okay which is what you do a little bit time, yeah so well, just um, a little bit longer there's another side bit about trying to cut off the flow here there's i'd love to get two thoughts from you on is um what is your thoughts on the hinge and hold technique because it's mm -hmm. the one that people talk about an awful lot and i've often found it is one quick way that for example, I play with my dad sometimes and he really struggles with um, like a bit of a shank on his chip mm. shots. And I, I always say that as much as there's always a way of doing it, like the hinge and hold, there's so little to go wrong because it's just about a putting stroke, right? Mm -hmm. So what's your view on that? Well, I think the hinge and hold, if, if you're a flipper, so if, if someone's a, a big flipper mm. this way, trying to feel like you're holding the shaft more is mm. probably a good thing. And, and the thing in, in, in golf is like the, the feel and real thing, like totally different. You might feel like you're really holding. In reality, if you're a big flipper, you're still gonna probably release it to what, what I call a one point here. But the hinge and hold in most circumstances is where the player actually doesn't release the club at all. It's totally held. So if, you, if you're really good and you practice it a lot, it's actually quite effective. Mm. The downside is the ball can come off a little bit hot, mm. but you do have to get the back of the ball. Okay, you can obviously ch you can change ball position a bit without change height as well. But um, I think if you're good, then it's great and you're practicing a lot, it's good. I don't think it's the safest technique, okay. but, if you're a bit, but if you're a big flipper, flipper yeah. it's probably something you should try. Yeah. So it, it depends where you well, are with it and what your tendencies are. You, you were too far with yeah, it, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, you were too far with it. I was too hingy and too holdy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Let's push that ball forward one inch. Very good. Longer backswing. Nice. Bit of check and just runs out. Yeah, it's lovely. Isn't it? It's good. All right, should we make it a bit more difficult? Should we uh, Come on then. Give me some. soften it up a bit more, yeah? yeah we've got, we've got, what have we got? 18 feet probably, but we're going to land it a little further. Okay, so I'll, I'm just adopting a similar technique. So we need a higher shot. Well, just, yeah. Do what I'd normally do. Do what you normally do, yeah. Okay. What I'd probably normally do for now is I'd probably bottle it and I'd just try and like... So that's that. the classic, that's the yeah. heavy one you're saying, yeah? Exactly, that's probably what I'd do. I know that's what I shouldn't do, but it's what mm -hmm. I feel like I can get within 10 foot. Yeah. Whereas, like, honestly, back in the day, I'd be like literally licking my lips. And I'd almost sometimes even not even be too averse to try one of them. Like, I used to a lob shot. Yeah, I, I just would, I'd just be so confident with anything. Um, and it's just completely gone. So I guess somewhere in the middle would be feeling something like Like that's that nice. Sort of like falls more like what we've been working on with that. That, well, that looked much more like we were, what we were just doing, yeah. So it's like being confident to not worry about. I always feel a little bit like I'm trying to keep on top of the ball. Uh -huh. for whatever reason, just the thing for me. So that's the one I worry about for you. Yeah. See? That's the one that's and probably gotten you. Yeah, yeah. So one more. Would, you, would I go a little bit further back with this one or not? Ball position wise? Yeah. No, we'd go the other way really. Right, okay, interesting. So here I've got a feeling of a blade now with it being far forward, mm -hmm. but we'll just try and... It will do if you have that long arc, which you, which you tend to have, you could potentially blade it, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, a few things here. So um, we do need to move the ball further forward and we do need to get a longer backswing and we do need to get a, little, a tiny bit more wrist hinge in there. Okay. Okay. And I'd like you to, Give this a go, we're trying to release the club a little bit more now. I know it's against your kind of way you've always done it. It's more, but even more than that. And I don't think the 58 is helping you out. Okay. What we're going to do is, we, you've got 54, haven't you? Yep. Yeah. That feels quite nice, actually, that thing you just said there, just releasing it more. Yeah. I don't feel against that. Yeah, but that it'd be better to, better to train it with 54 because okay. having a stronger loft is going to sort of give you the incentive to release it a bit more, does that make sense? So, so when you have a really weak loft, players tend to then pull it because you've got a lot to begin with. Right, so Seve never had more than 55 degrees of loft his entire career, and he could really? have, he could up his left nostril because he knew how to release the club. It's only really the last wow. 15, 20 years this sort of 58, 60 yeah. things come in really. So basically, so, with this having a stronger face, I'm not going to feel like I have to give it as much. Well, a stronger face means you've got to be smoother and you've got to try and release it more to get a softer flight. Okay, so let's uh, let's put the ball more on that left left heel. We're going to have the shaft in line with the back of the ball. That's really good. I don't hear just yet. Go to the top of the back swing. So I want a little bit more right hip turn here. I want to try and get a little bit longer swing. I'm going to be here. Okay. Okay. What I really like that you do is you always get the club in a neutral position with it. You don't, you don't, a lot of people do this. Okay. You don't do that. You're like really good with the club face. Okay. You just got to get a little bit longer with it. Okay. Okay. And then from there, understand how this butter to grip travels, right? Mm. So you've always had your butter to grip go down mm. this way and you've yeah, held the loft, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And, I, and what we're going to try here and see if this works for you. Okay, we're going to see if the butter grip can work back up towards you. So the club shallows more and it lands, look, and it releases more this way. Okay. And that, that will feel pretty different to how you've ever chipped. Yeah. There's a lot more cup in there and it's, it's released through. And that's using more of this yeah, part of the it. club, yeah? Okay. So just to feel like before you hit it, just hold it just in your right hand and uh, put a couple of uh, left the fingers there against the top of the grip that way. That's it. And go to the top of the swing. Now you see this gap between the butter grip and your hand, yep. that gap for you historically has stayed the same or even got bigger, mm. yeah? Mm. What I want you to feel like you're going to do now is actually let this gap close. There you go, I feel it. right? Is that release? That's release two. Release two, yeah. yeah. Now, there's a difference as well though, so between like letting it happen, which is soft and letting the weight of the club swing itself, and Flipping making it. it happen. And we don't want to make it happen. Yeah. This way you've got to be soft with the grip, okay? okay. I think I know the feeling. Yeah. I think I have got this feeling. That was very good. Now that for me is a much better shot yeah. than chucking a 58 yeah. off the back foot and do driving you know, it. Do you know what, if, if I look at the psychological side of it, weirdly, I'm a really like intense guy. Like, I feel like I want to control everything. And I feel like I'm in control. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, 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 I get and it. this, I'm like, 
out of control. The club do. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, obviously yeah. me, yeah. but I'm, I really struggle with that mindset because I, I feel like I'm less in control, yeah. even though I'm not. You have to you have to give up control for this shot to gain control, Weird, right? So kick, that ball's creeping. That's it. Forward. You're going to go wide with a little bit of hinge, and you let the club fall. Now that is much better. Yeah, I've got it. You're landing that two inches behind it. It's just sliding under it. Lovely. Yeah. Look at that. And then you got to just like I feel like that first one. I didn't think about it being soft because. And it's gone long, whereas that yep. one I sort of felt like, right, this is going to... You've got to feel like your transition just takes sort of five minutes yeah. here, right? Really smooth, just let the club fall back down. You see the spin? No, but you see the spin on that ball. That's why I use these picks. These picks balls are brilliant for short yeah. game, by the way, because they show you the well, spin. I yeah. I love it. I play pretty much picks exclusively. Yeah. Right, let's think about target now, right there. So that's you hitting it. I mean, much softer and much higher with 54 oh, than you were doing with the 58. I mean, it's just an entirely different thought like i just found myself in that last shot thinking about a landing zone yeah it's traditionally here all i see is that slope and yeah am I gonna it's get not even it's it? not even in play really is it no, you, play you're landing that what 10 feet over that now it's not remotely that's what yeah. it used to be but i'm not worried about any yeah. of that because i'm not it's not relevant to me yeah. so ball forward light grip wide release it that was a little bit so what, now, didn't I? Well, what you did there was, that wasn't bad. I mean, Crikey, we'll take the result. Yeah. But you just got, you got there and there was a little bit of drive of the hips. Mm. So that's where we just want to feel that from transition, you let the club fall and then it opens up, okay? Like there's no, there's no drive in there. It's got to be, it's got to be. I sometimes find myself doing this on putts sometimes. Because I'll be a real, I think, DJ. I think, I don't care. Yeah. Like, just step up that's and it. be like so... I'll give it to Freddy Couples, yeah. So languid and so just like, you know... Yeah, like that, you've got to be like soft. Much that one. But you've got to be soft. Short game yeah. is about being relaxed. Yeah. If you're tight, you know. That's, that's it, the and opposite of me in general. <laughs> I'm just a bit too intense. I need to <laughs> chill out a bit. Have some more kids or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that definitely won't do it. No, it won't really. <laughs> <laughs> it won't do it at all. Okay, the front. Yeah, good shot. Very good. Right, let's go for this tight pin here, right? So yeah. there's less wind. Now, automatically you're thinking, grab the 58, aren't you, probably? Yeah, probably, you know, but, but equally with this move. We're going to see, we're going to see. If we, I mean, if you can keep this short, you'll have done really well here, but let, this is a really good challenge. Can you land this on the green and keep it short, okay, right? It. See, that's all now. If I think about that, I'm so much more likely to do it. There you go, you've done it. Back to what we said at the beginning, you painted a picture yeah. and you've responded. It, it, honestly, you actually ridiculous how effective that is in general and I think particularly for me is to have like yeah. to almost block everything out yeah. and just think about a goal and particularly when you get a bit of technique behind it as well that was a bit leggy there yeah. you feel that so that well. so when you um, when you said we haven't talked about this so far but generally you haven't needed to, to go into it but when you set up there's a difference between standing on the ground and sort of rooting right you want to feel like you're a little heavier like, if you really feel like you kind of got your diver's boots on, like, really squeeze your feet down. That doesn't mean your legs don't move. You are going to have some hip rotation back and through, but you don't, side to side is a real killer in short games. So you don't want that horizontal force. It's very much a rotational force. So if you put your feet down more, it's going to encourage more rotation and less drive, right? You've only done two of those, but two is enough to tell me it might come in, mm -hmm. right? So just well, get those feet down. Once was a really good visual for me for short game, was I visualised I had a concrete pole going from my left yeah, shoulder all the way through down, all the way six yeah. on the ground and all I did was rotate around Fantastic. that Fantastic. Yeah, I call that your pivot line. So you get that pivot line you just rotate around it. So, do you like narrower stance here? You'd be narrower yeah, for this for this sort of length of shot, yeah. I mean, it's, you've front. got you've got like your um your your feet really about one club between the middle of your feet. You I mean your heels are, bit, are nearly touching look. Yeah. But you've got two clubbers between your toes because yeah. you're flaring this one out, yeah. And that's okay. Yeah, it's good. That, when you set this left foot open like this, it gets this hip externally rotated, so it's going to help you move better through the ball. And it's important to do that. Then the loft stays on the club. So that bit again, sorry. So this left when when you have your left foot straight, yeah. the hip turns in. Mm. So as you come through, you can't open mm. up. As soon as you do this, it opens the hip the up. So as you come through, you're opening up, and that means you keep the loft on. If you're too square, it's going to turn the face over this way. So if I'm as far left as I can be here, mm -hmm. and I move this in, have I lost the benefit of being forward because I brought this right foot in, or does it still count as left? Well, ball, what ball position-wise? Yeah. So if I, I'm yeah. trying to be on the left heel, yeah. I'm obviously on the left heel now. Uh -huh. Does doing this change that? It does. It moves it more. It moves it more in the middle. So when yeah, when you get wider, position. yeah, exactly. So and ball position really is more in relation to where your chest bone is, by the way. 
I like to think of it where I'll line it up with the okay. chest bone, yeah? Okay, right. So your chest bone for, for this shot wants to be just on the back of the ball, just behind the ball. Because this is a slightly indirect contact, yes. Just behind the ball and it's going to help it just slide beneath it. Now you hit that a little bit, yeah? Yeah, yeah you're right, I did. So let's give it the best, the best DJ Freddy Couples impression, right? Where you're just going to let the club fall back down. Very good. Almost too much. Very good. Where would you see a landing area here? On the green still? Right? Yeah, on the green. Yeah, just on the green. Brilliant. It's so true. And that's 54 degree, remember. That's yeah. a 54. If you were doing this with 58, you'd play some really good ones, but you'd also get the one that like rides up the face. Mm. We should just stay here. Yeah. Yeah, good. Now this time, let's just, um, so when I'm playing these shots, okay, it might look like my my thumbs are kind of on the grip, right? So in terms of, they look like they're on, but really they're just resting, yeah? Now when you start getting the thumbs a little tighter, so if I squeeze the thumbs on the grip, can you see how the ball jumps, yeah? But if you take, if you take the thumbs off the grip, I mean, I'll try a drill here, just literally take them off totally. And when you take the thumbs off the grip, you see how it allows the club to swing a lot more. Like it actually gives you the feeling of the club swinging. So try not to squeeze with the pads down onto the grip. Let the club flow a little bit more. Actually let it. So try it without thumbs then? Yeah, try it as a drill. It'll feel a bit weird, but it's, it's a good exercise for sure. They're literally way off like that. Take them off, yeah. And you should just get a slightly better awareness of what the club head's doing and the weight of the club head. You still drove it actually. Let's do that again. Okay. Just feel it release. That's yeah, good, there you go. Yeah. So you're holding it your fingers, not the thumbs. There you go. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, okay. yeah. So, I mean, in terms of when you, you put your thumbs back on, but just rest them on, and then you start to get the feeling of it releasing. So what, what, standing here, what I, I, I don't visualize, maybe it's because of the shot selection I've been hitting, I don't visualize how much the ball's gonna run out. Mm -hmm. And every time it's run out as much as it has, I'm really surprised. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't see this shot as one, the trajectory I'm hitting it, landing what, 15 foot short and yeah. still get into the hole. Right? Uh, uh, that's surprising me for some reason. What, the fact it's getting there? Yeah. I just, I yeah, I think it's a bit of ground condition. <laughs> okay, I've seen a green three and stuff and just come out watering. So it's obviously getting a little bit, a little bit bad, a little bit sort of dry down here, but that's great. Yeah. And that's the other thing you've got it. You've got to, the ground condition is the thing that people again, slightly miss. I mean, yeah, of course. very different times of the year. Effects you know, how much rainfall we've had is how the ball will react. Yeah. What, um, so, if I'm not hitting 54, hit 58 here anymore, where, when am I hitting 58? Out of that, basically. <laughs> out of the rough, for yeah. sure. Out of the sand. I always joke, 58s and 60s on the back should say for emergency use only. Really? On the back. So, say that for 58. And, and 60 degrees. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Big red letters. Emergency use only. So, with, with that, that makes me feel like I would, might change my next wedge setup to go 56, 52 mm -hmm. and gain a club somewhere else. I don't know where yeah. I put that club yet. If you can learn to release a club properly, which you've done clearly, you've done that today, right? Um, you won't need to carry as much loft. Mm. Saying that, I do carry a 60. Because you never know. Be you're because, a exactly. Because, you know, you do, and, and we haven't talked about bare lies. We'll play a few high ones off a bare lie where actually the 60s are quite good because they tend to shave the toe. You get toe relief on a 60. So you can actually still nip it from a, from a 60 lie. So, but I do like the idea of 52 56. I've always been 52 56. Interesting. Yeah, I like that. Maybe yeah. I do that and then I get a 60, but that 60 becomes for yeah. a real emergency. Yeah, yeah. And I really Literally, need get that. it stamped on the back. Yeah, yeah. I, might, I might do that. I'll do that. So, um, okay, so that's very interesting. Should we do, should we do some bare lies yeah. uh, in the air? Because have you got, you've got a 60 there, haven't you? I've got oh, 58, 58, sorry, yeah. These are, for me, I'm very, at the minute, very tempted to part. If it's yeah. like really short. I mean, this is just for the benefit of the camera. Look, this is absolutely rock yeah, hard, right? Rock so, hard. Um, so we'll go, okay, we'll go for there, right? Really tough shot, okay, yeah. bare lie. Now, obviously, the, the sensible shot from this sort of lie is definitely putting it kind of almost going back to where you would have been. Okay, interesting. Which is off the back foot. Now, when you put the back foot and put the shaft forward, obviously that takes the bounce off. For this sort of lie, the bounce isn't really your friend. So so that, so I've on the bare lie, yeah. I can go more hingy, more holding. Totally, that's how I would play it. Because from there, you're guaranteeing then that you're gonna get that nip. And, and that's that, because that I can't play it. it the other way because... Because if you do try and play, I mean, if, you, if you're absolutely perfect, you can do it, but I'll just, I'll try and play the release tube using the bounce from this bare line. I mean, that's totally yeah. hard pan. And so just explain why 
it's harder to play the bounce shot with this a bare light. Because when, when you're playing um, this, when, when the shaft is neutral there, and you're coming in with the middle section of the bounce, because it's firm, bounce is too much. It's going to kick, right? As you'll as you'll see here, it's like a bare bunker shot sort of thing. Yeah, exactly, same sort of thing. So you'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See that kicked a bit. Yeah. Right, so it landed in kick. So you have to nip these. You have to play it differently. It. So this is where the design of the wedge is like, these high toes are great. So if you've got, you yeah, got the 58 the there, and you've got a seven degree 58. Now, if you can see here how it's shaved on this area. Yeah. So really this part of the bounce is, uh, of the solder is less bounce. So you can use that to your, your advantage so would on you, this sort of line. Bear in mind what you've seen so far. Would you say that I have the right bounce set up? What way could I go to give me a little bit of extra What have you got on this one, the 54 is? The 54 is 10 again. Yeah, you've got like mid bounces really. Yeah, that's fine you think, there's which, no, which, nothing which, alarming. Which is good. Okay, cool. What I'm surprised at, the way you weren't doing it in, in the past, that you wouldn't have higher bounce. Mm. Because a way of offsetting drive would be to put you in a higher bounce. Mm. Like if you said to me, Dan, I don't really want to prove, I just want to work on what I've got. I'd yeah. probably get you in the highest bounce possible. Right. Because then it would be a way of offsetting it. Okay. But generally when players start to release it properly, they can go to lower bounce. Okay, so I'm better off history. sticking wire. Yeah, no, really. you're good there. Okay, fine. fine, um, fine but fine. what we're going to do here is you're going to put the toe down lower. Okay, yep. And you can see how if I hands put, up sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. If I put the club down, it's natural lie angle. See how the leading edge sits uh, yeah. quite proud. Yeah. If I do that, it sits lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So this is where you're, you're going to use that. So similar okay. shot, but we're just going to change the uh, position at address. So we'll go 58 this time. This is an emergency now. You see. This is an emergency, yeah. guys. Sirens are blaring. So I'm more here. You're going to go a little more open with your feet, because we're going to cut slightly across okay. this. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, ball more in the middle, actually, not quite as far okay. back as that, yeah. And you're going to go up there, and you're going to work it out, mm -hmm. and you're going to hit just behind the ball still, okay. but the toe is going to nip across this way. So I'm going to just toe... No wrist, really, here. Okay, fine, I, I think right. I've got this feeling. Yeah. I'm going to so just you're going to work toe it, punch just it. Just get, get the line right. You're going to swing to me here. Yep. Okay, that's it, across. Work, work across it. But you, okay. I don't want you getting the ball first, though. You, you want to get in the ground first? Please. Ground first with the toe. Pretty good. How's that feel? Yeah, it feels like one of the sort of shots I'd try and play for a bit of a gag sort of thing. Yeah. Like, if you know what I mean. By the way, with what you're saying here, what impact have you put the upslope lie? Would it be the same if it's a flat lie as well? Yeah, it is. Because okay, really the lie here trumps everything. Yeah, cool, you know, cool, cool. In terms of, we, we can talk about slopes, but ball more middle, that's it. A little bit out and across. Now you went too square there, right? Okay. So you've got to go out and across with this Out one. and across more. Out and across. That's the one. Let's see how soft that came mm. off. But did you feel this part of the club hitting so. the ground and not the centre section? Okay, so that's an interesting thought, is to think about this hitting yes, the ground. It's this third. You've got to use this third here. Would you encourage a feeling of using that to hit the ball? I know you're never going to do that, but that's the feeling. Yeah, totally. Yeah, okay. that area. Okay. That's why we want that heel absolutely off the ground. Okay, really off the ground, okay, out yeah. to in. You've got to hit just behind it. Just getting the ball first there. So it's a shot, it's good. Mm -hmm. But if you want it, it's no angle fairer there, isn't it? If you want to get it a little higher and softer than that, we've mm -hmm. got to hit just behind it. That's brilliant. Absolutely top draw. You see the spin you got there yeah. for bare lie. Yeah. So it all depends. If the if the pin was another 10 feet on, I'd say just chuck it back in your stance and play the, the okay. holdy one, the hinge and holdy one. But if you if you this pin here, you do, this is the right shot. Brilliant, Seb. Absolutely love. Look at that. Mm, crazy that has See the spin there? Yeah. Good. Just Too feel. Much. Just just feel. That's yeah. fine. So no more putters from these lines, eh? Say again? No more putters from these yeah, lines. Yeah, no, but, no. But, but I always say that but sometimes putter will do the job, right? I'm not saying don't use your putter yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to try and shoot your low score. You give yourself more weapons, don't you? Yeah. So well, I've got to really just trust that it's going to stop, right? You've got to mm -hmm. just trust it. Pretty, pretty great. Yeah, you just, I just can't visualise how quick that stops. I'm so not used to yeah. getting that contact. Yeah, and when you play out the out the toe as well, you can you add a little bit more speed, which means you get a little bit more more clever speed, more spin because it comes yeah. off more dead off the toe. So, I mean, would you that, that is the high toe we've got with these yep. tight high toe tailor made clubs mm -hmm. is that is this is still the shot if you haven't got that but if you have got it it's going to be a massive advantage right but having grooves the design on the of these of the high toes are brilliant yeah, yeah i mean i mean some of the wedges are also shaved down there but if you've got a wedge with a high bounce and a really kind of like the bounce extends all the way out here hmm. this isn't doable yeah 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 you know so a specialist wedge particularly the high toe absolutely brilliant and um and you see you've also got these grooves on the toe yeah yeah, yeah. which make a big difference yeah, yeah, in terms yeah, of spin really getting that yeah. spin yeah yeah okay Right, some different lines in the rough now, just to see how kind of like you're able to adapt. So I'm going to give you 
couple of different lies. We'll, we'll play this sort of average one which sits down, sort of like, I feel like a medium lie, like it sit down a little bit. Okay. And uh, we'll go for this. Oh, that's here. medium. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll right. bury one in a minute. Okay, correct. <laughs> okay. Right, look forward to that. Uh, so, how, how do you find out the rough generally? Uh, look, again, this is such a strange thing, which is honest. The worse the lie, the more happy I am. I'll tell you why, is because I'm up against it. Yeah. And I feel like all of a sudden I stop thinking about a bad outcome, because I'm expecting a bad outcome. Mm -hmm. I'm now thinking, what could I do? Like, for example, I'm incredibly happy, not happy, because I'd rather not, in a plug bunker. Because I just, I don't know what it is, I just, I feel like I will be significantly better than the average person at this shot mm -hmm. compared to a really bog standard yeah. pitch shot. And it's an expectation thing as well. You're yeah. not massively you're you're freed not, up, you're aren't not expected to hit this stiff really, are you? Like anywhere like 10 feet is pretty good for me. Yep, yep, yep. Right, okay, let's see you play it. So that hole there. Have you gone 58 here? Got 58. Yep. I definitely have 58. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I, would, I, would, I have in my mind from years gone by that I would almost treat it a little bit like a bunker shot maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you like that no, or not. No, I do like that. Um, I take, I'm thinking about hitting it heavy. I, it's all about feel. I'd come over to a similar lie and I'd feel how it goes through it. And I'd feel, oh, that's, that's really nice grass. That's not actually going to be too snaggy. Mm -hmm. So I'd factor that in. I'd probably see me popping this just to the top of the hill and then rolling all the way to the hole. Feeding it down, a little bit that, left that's, to right. That's how I sort of see it, yeah, exactly. I feel it naturally goes further forward here. And I feel like I'm just sending the club under the ball and trying to get a bit of loft, so. Look at that, man of your word. Because I've just, Talk myself into it That's so what we much. Said, hey, brilliant, absolutely. You painted the picture again. Played that really well. Thank you. Yeah, I like. I'd see. I don't. I don't hate it for that reason. It's just whether I could do regularly. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, weird. Like I, impressive. I genuinely. I wouldn't get anything closer doing no, that here. No, you played, that, you played that brilliant. Listen, I don't want to change too much there. Yeah, happy um, with that. I'll, I'll tell you what you're doing well, because it's important to know what you're doing well. Okay, as to what okay, you're doing, okay. Right? So what you're doing well there is you're, you're just getting a little bit more on your left side. Yeah. Okay, you look like you maybe just increase the grip pressure a little bit there, which is a good thing, okay. just to hold the loft, which you've done really well there, because otherwise it can, it can turn over. And what you did well there, you opened left, which just got you a little bit more left through the ball, like a little bit out to win, which helps it through the rough there a little bit. So it's almost those principles to the other shots, yeah, really. Yeah, I mean, so they're starting to come in, but let, let's um, let's sit it down a little bit more. Okay. Let's come back here. Okay. Yeah. There, is. there we yeah. go. So my initial thought here is I think about, I mean, I'd, I'd have to second think it because of the amount of rough there is here. Mm -hmm. But if we were playing to that flag, mm -hmm. I'd probably try and get this one out low and just runny. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I probably would still, are we going to the same flag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd probably go with the side, i get on my back foot here, rightly or wrongly, i get on my back foot, and I would basically try and jab it about, well, because of that bank. You're going to stick it into that bank, go low into it. I think so. Mm -hmm. And it, that might make me change to a 54, because mm -hmm. otherwise I can see me getting it short of the bank and then getting stuck on top of yeah, it. Yeah, no, I like that. I think so, I can, if Let's I, see if we get the contact. If I try and do it with this club, I think I've just got to hit a bit more. I almost think about a left bounce before the right bounce. So I'd be right here and I'd be sort of like, and it's exactly what I sort of thought would happen. It hasn't quite got to the landing spot mm -hmm. because of the amount of loft. Yeah, I, so that's good. I like that way of thinking. I just, I'm conscious that if you're playing it that far back, there's a good chance it is going to grab like, they got a bit- Okay, so not quite as far back. Well, I'd, I, would, I would go much wider with your stance actually. Go kind of driver width here. Oh wow. And, uh, but, and then, but, and then like ball, no, 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 ball in the middle. Okay. But get, because you've gone wider, you can lean more to the left. So okay, I like, like I said, you've got to get your chest bone in front of the ball more. So the ball position is more relative to where the chest is. Get a bit lower? Yeah, nice and low. And this way more, get, get, get more there. Okay. And down the grip, a bit of shaft lean in here. And then what happens then is your setup almost gives you your swing for free. Because, mm. you're, because you're wider and leaning this way mm. more, you see from here, that means you're gonna tend to come up more. Mm. And then down just behind and hold the loft this way. Whereas you were coming almost like- Yeah, 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 there. yeah. 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 Okay. So we're still getting the benefit of the ball position, but you're gonna be a little more hinged here, okay. and a little bit more poppy. So a bit more left. Okay, just behind the ball. It pops out easier. Do you feel like yeah. it was a bit steeper then? I felt it was steeper, yeah. I feel yeah. like that, yeah. Just so look at that big, thick, I mean, that's yeah, awful, yeah, right? Yeah. Also, the thing is, this, this ball, this, the grass here, this lie here is going to go over the ball. It's going to make it really come out top spinning. Gotcha. So you allow for that in your landing spot. Okay. Pretty good from that lie. Not far off, is it? That? Just you, that hill is in the you'd right. You'd pleased with uh, right anything dodgy. cutting off of that. Yeah. See, I'm greedy. And I think these shots make me be greedy. I think yeah. that's a good mindset for me. I want to be greedy. I don't want to just get on the ground. I really think, right, how can I? Okay, just get a little yeah. longer back swing. Okay. Let me show you. So you can get much more, uh, so again, sitting down, 
nice and wide here down the grip let's see if we can get a little bit more height so you're going to okay. hinge it and pop oh, that really yeah. oh wow so it's okay. going to pop up more so it's more there okay and this way okay 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 so regardless of how bad the light is you can still try and get the loft yep okay so, so you've got to hold the loft on as you come through you hold it there's a really bad one is that's quite a bit bad in there isn't it so i'm, I'm going to try and still I'm not, I'm not you're, not, you're not releasing here. No, what you're doing releasing. here, you are doing it. You're to release one, but holding the loft on. Okay. Like that. It's a lofty punch. Yeah, so just, just wider, lean left, hinge, hold the loft, pop it up. See how it's a better shot? Almost, yeah. Yeah, you get your back swing a bit longer, you've got the bit perfect longer. shot there. Okay. Club comes up, down. Very good. It's too much, yeah. yeah. That's a different way of playing it. Yeah, if yeah, it's really yeah. buried like that, yeah. Gives you a bit more chance with the height. Just quit on it, didn't I? Yeah, a little bit. You've got to keep your chest moving a lot more than that. Quit on it. This is grabby grass, okay? Yeah. You've got to keep a little bit more speed. Yeah, it's got longer back swing. So oh, yeah. Really hinge swing. it up and get it back. Okay. There you go. There, longer back swing. Just sets yeah. the tempo as well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. That's a good shot. Good shot. Okay. And then the other one you can do for these little short sided ones, you know, when you just miss a green along. Mm. You can do, you know the one we did from down there with the toe? Oh, yeah, where yeah. you just put the toe this way and you work out and across. That works quite well through the rough, mainly. Okay. When you go here and uh, left yeah, through yeah, yeah. So it's a bit like a sort of slicey one. So it acts a bit like a scythe where the toe, toe, toe of the club's working. Across, the so you're going way. through the thickness. Yeah. It's, it's when these, I mean, these are tricky little, yeah. kind of like spongy lies, right? Mm. But if you work the toe across, it tends to slice through it. Okay. A little bit easier. What would you, I'll do this one first. What would you advocate for like really, really into the grain, like in those foreign? Yeah, so there you want to be ball forward with a little bit less loft, but really release the club because you've got to use the bounce. I use 52s, but really let the club go this way. You don't okay. want to be going into it no, with no, that lean no, edge. Okay. So that would be a swipey one as well? Yeah, that's it. Release so th club. this one is ball middle? Middle, that's it. And open the face a little bit, aim left, and just get the toe working out and across. And just lengthen the swing and you've got it. Okay. Good. Hopefully you feel that work. Comes out so soft and that rough. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, it's a, this is just when you've got these little kind of like tight yeah. ones, no yeah. green to work with. Sits down, really sticky grass, out to in. Mm. Just pops through it. Good. So it works it's going to rolled out fairly yep. nice. Good. Okay. Right, pitching, yeah? Yeah. This is the big one. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it's like, again, the same thing I'm thinking about. Yeah. Not embarrassing myself as opposed to getting it close. I feel like if I want to get it close, I would hit this with a 58, but at the moment I'm probably getting more 54. Okay. Um, well, 54 is doable. Okay. What would you say even less, potentially? No, no, not less, probably. Okay. No, but that, that pin, you probably, 54 would be the, the, the lowest you to should the, go. To the second yeah. one, right? Yeah, second pin. It's 50, it's 50, probably 55 yards that, with about 30. So 30 to what carry I want green. to do with these, my theory is absolutely like clipping it and getting it to jab. Like that's how I see it in my mind, and I used mm -hmm. to be able to do it, but again, I'm aware that it's not a, it's not a lot of angle for error. Uh, that's how I want to play it in my mind right now is. Like that, but I just know I was millimetres from death there. Big old divot. Big old divot. Uh, yeah, oh Jesus, right, yeah. Um, I never used to be that much of a divot, but this, yeah. this wet ground condition where I started the chunking, it was basically, so this is the real like uh, litmus test, if you mm -hmm. like. Um, I feel like I probably would switch to a 58. If I was sitting shots on my own here, I'd probably hit 58. I feel like I could hit it a bit more. That's. Yeah, I feel like I'm trying that's quite, to... That's quite a nice technique, that, again. I mean, yeah. it's good, you're moving well. I mean, you can see that divot, how the roots start at the beginning look, and you can see how it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper after it. I guess that's good, yeah. So, so that's well, that. no, well, it's actually turning you a little bit too steep at times there, so it's okay. going too steep. So we would need to shallow your pitching out to improve things. Okay, it's I'm a little bit too very steep, happy really. to do that. Yeah. So if I try that a little bit... So that was different. Did that feel like it was a shallower... Yeah, I was trying to do it more shallow. Yeah. But obviously it's gone significantly less far. Yeah, back swing got short though. Okay, that's a key thing for me. Yeah. I'm in too much of a hurry to hit mm -hmm. it, I think. Do you ever try and um, like try and draw a pitch? You ever thought about that? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So like, yeah, I would really accentuate it, I'd almost aim in, almost at the, the tripod and be like... like it would come out. a low sort of hooky one and, yeah. and chase it up there. Again, I'd use that a lot in Lynx Golf. Yeah. But I think the draw idea is good because it's going to help shallow you out, but I mean more like a flighted draw. So okay. a really good drill for you, 
it's brilliant for you to stop this hitting down too hard is you put it if you tee it up like a driver oh wow and this will teach you low point control because if you do your old one or this one here with the, when yeah. you've got this big divot and you're hitting down basically you're going to hit down you're going to hit the ball like really high off the club face mm. and the ball would only go about 20 feet right if so you're going to come down just just the very nature of teeing it up instinct wise and subconsciously is going to promote and you hover the club at the bottom of the ball here it's going to promote more of a rounded backswing which is what you get you're quite armsy and hingy mm. so it's going to create more of a right side rotation back and then from there it's also going to encourage you to swing a little more to the right which will shallow you out and release the club head a bit more you're actually letting the club turn over for this shot turn over so you're actually releasing it. and if you get it right you'll really spin it but you'll, it'll teach you to hit it off this sort of second, third groove, which is... Um, is it will relaxy and then like, you know, floppy again, this one? Yeah, it's soft, yeah. So you'll see the club will swing and release it. You see, yeah, it's almost got... And watch the spin now, so you can see it'll just bite up. Yeah, yeah. There, right? Oh, yeah. So you can see the tee peg hasn't moved. Mm. So if the tee peg hasn't moved, that tells you that you've come in shallow and I hit that and you'll, you'll do this in a second, you'll, you'll hit it off this part of the club face and... You've heard of gear effects, like mm. in drivers, you know, when you, when you hit it off the heel, it tends to fade and so it tends to hook, which is horizontal gear effect. You also get like the vertical gear effect. So when you hit down on the ball a lot, when you pitch, it tends to deflect the face this way and pops it up a bit. But when you hit it lower off the face, the, the loft climbs over it, increases mm. the friction. And that's how you hit that lower launch in higher spinning shot. So this, this drill for you will be great because I say it's going to shallow you out. It's going to teach you how you can just draw it a little bit and how you can just clip it. You can it. just see the spin yeah, on it. You can see it and it just, just watch it now. Just yeah, pulls up there. Yeah, that's crazy. What club yeah. is that? That's 56. 56, yeah. yeah. wow. So give this a go. I think, I think with you With know, 54 or with six, 58? 54 is good. Okay. Um, you're quite an instinctive player. A lot of the shots I've given you today, I've just sort of pe given you a picture to paint and you've just done it. Yeah. So just don't think too much. Just okay. try and give me a one yard draw with flight. One yard yeah. draw with flight. Yeah. Okay. Don't play the ball that far back. Play it a little forward, that's it. One yard draw with flight, okay. There we go, we've got a one yard draw. And we left the tee peg there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Good. Okay. Now, is anything, try, try and feel what you're doing here. Do you a feel, bit lower than that though, right? It'd be nice to get it a little bit lower. Yeah, See, that, was probably, that, was probably groove, that was probably groove six. I want groove two and three. Okay, right? crikey. Yeah. Try it the club face, get the groove. <laughs> okay, groove two and three. That was groove two and three. Do you yeah, feel it? I did feel it, now, yeah. Did you feel the, the club face like, I don't know if you can feel this or not, but like climb over the ball almost. Like Maybe, it, yeah. It like sucked on the ball. It like yeah. really sucked into the club face. Yeah. And that gives you the friction. And it's actually the spin that keeps the flight down. Okay. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Because it's climbed, it's climbed up the face. Yeah. So, so just... Ball position. Middle. That's it. Just, just give me a backswing. Just a bit, um, obviously weight forward still here, right? Yeah, weight slightly forward. A little so one just, yard draw. Just give me a backswing and stop. Yeah, so you're feeling like you're really turn in in here okay all right so there's more rotation that's going to get you slightly on the inside and then it can release okay and you've got you say you've got a, a sim at home so if you're working on it in the sim for this sort of number i'd want you to be swinging around about five to six to the right with your club face zero to target so the face is six degrees shut to path got it and they're the sort of numbers you want because at this speed at 50 miles an hour club speed it's not going to turn over like if you do it with like no. a driver obviously it's going to be a hook isn't it yeah 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 but with okay. a wedge so it almost feel happen. like i'm trying to hook it yeah That was good. Now, just your legs got a little involved, but I like that. That's going to check. Got the grab, didn't yeah? it? Yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah. That's good. And that's with a 54. And I've, I've left yeah. the tee there consistently, you haven't left I? left it there, so you're hitting it off the right part of the club face. Right side rotates back, draw the ball. Nice. See that draw? That felt lovely. I mean, that's just... It yeah. feels delicious, doesn't it? <laughs> it just feels delicious. So I would just be doing lots of this. Oh, wow. Right? And then we just transfer it back to the turf and we, we see if we can shallow it out. Yeah, you're really learning that now. That's spinning like hell. There we go. What's this? Absolutely grabbing, isn't there it? There we go. Right. Insane. Now, we're on wet turf here, so we're not going to get no divot. But if you were yep. doing this on a links course and it was dry, we'd expect no divot. Okay. Right? You just want to yep. clip it. Because it's wet, we will get some divot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sure. the ground's going to give way. Sure. But what I'm hoping, we're not going to get these squirrels. Anything like grows. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to be a little bit shallower, right? So, much shallower divot. Much shallower. And a much better shot. Almost had a draw. You see how, the, grab, see how the yeah. divot has kept the same depth? Right, yeah. it's not come way and down. And it's not like any crazy off to the left no. shape to that divot either, which is yeah. what it feels like it's going to be the way yeah. I'm hitting it. So still exact same thought, like the yeah. little draw. Yeah, just play the ball a little forward, forward, forward. So swing to the right, release the club. Much shallower, there you go. Now that is a better way of pitching. Yeah, wow. Yeah, good. You can hear that shallower now. 
Yeah. Wonder what happens if I try and get a little bit more distance because that's probably more like 40 yards, isn't it? That one. Yeah. Do, do you? Well, do, do you feel you can wind I, the right I, side I, up I, a bit more? I worry. I worry that I might. Um, we'll find out. Start going after it a bit. Yeah. I, I yeah. worry. Yeah. I worry. That I've got to try. And, I've got that lovely control, which then is maybe if I'm hitting them consistently 40 yards, this is now a 40 yard shot. Yeah. But and then and remember, the we're trying to be soft, aren't we? So yeah. you might need to go to the 15, do the same thing. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I've got yeah, no yeah. problem with that. You okay. know, it's almost like it's a compliment to your short game if you're struggling to get it there. Okay. You know? Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. Got it. Okay. I like that. I like that thought. That breeds confidence, doesn't it? I just so feel like I'm I really thought your back swing was better there. You just didn't. You still got to make sure your chest bone, right? Your sternum there is still the the hub of the you know the engine. It's like the hub of the wheel. That has to keep moving. You've got to keep that moving through. And that's why I cut it a bit heavy because I didn't. Yeah, you were just a bit too slow there. Now, legs down, legs rooted. But have a little bit more chest speed in this now. Let's see, I like how you're playing that. Let's see you do it with 50 out of interest. Okay. Without changing anything. So that's got there, yeah? Yeah. Wasn't the best contest. It wasn't great, was it? Very shallow, though. It was shallow. Like that. That's going to get there with a the run. But yeah, again, it's, it's actually landed a similar sort of distance, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Is it because I'm manipulating the angle and I'm therefore ending up with the same dynamic loft? Um, not really. You just, okay. you just, you've just got to match. You just got to match the speed up a little bit more. You got to get a little bit more, not aggressive, but just, just, let's just get a little bit more chest speed through it. There you go. That's all it is. That was like 10% yeah. more. Yeah, that's it. And that's got and that. you carried it there. So maybe that is for me. Is it yeah. is better to be more controlled with totally. the more club? That's going to breed Absolutely. that feeling you want. Yeah, totally. And that's um, that's a more acceptable divot as well. It's a little bit deeper than some of the other ones. Yeah, but it's not like the first ones, right? No, no, no. Okay. no. Remember, it's wet here. We are going to yeah, get yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, but you can, if you've got a simulator, it's brilliant practices because you'll, you'll get the feedback of clubhead speed. I've always felt it's interesting you say that because I've always been hesitant to practice this because I feel like I'm cheating with the mat. Yeah. I feel like yeah, I'm, I know just, you mean. I'm just breeding a confidence. Go on the golf course, all of a sudden one chunk, I'm like, oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. Did, I always would rather get out on a grass area for these sort of practice I shots. I agree, but I think it's, I think it's still better, it's than, still nothing, better yeah. than nothing. So middle, left, centre, draw, a bit Should longer. Feel a draw, right, right with path. I'm going to see the ball moving right to left of the ball. Yeah. So that's a pull than a draw, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Really? That's, that's my path. cheat. That's your path not going right enough. Lost your legs a bit there. See, mm -hmm. are you driven? Yeah. You've only done about three or four times today, but that's so, when you haven't got your feet down. There's one thing I do sometimes, which I don't know if you've noticed it. I don't notice that I've done it today, but I do it so much. I go on the way back, snag the ground. Mm -hmm. I've done that much today. Mm -hmm. I do I've that seen a couple of times, but that, that's really just, but that's, that comes from some grip pressure and not letting the club sit loose enough on the ground. Like you've got to feel like the, the sole of the club is just literally just brushing the ground. Okay. So it's that's when you push the club in, it creates that yeah. jolt, you know, when you start. Because it's, it's a real problem for me. Probably anything up to a 100 yard shot, or even a 9 iron, sometimes I'll even do it. Yeah. Okay. Just feel like you're going to, yeah, just, just literally let it touch the tops of the blades of grass rather than sinking into mm. them. See, I really like that. That's the best yeah. one you've done. Okay, you just turn. And that's that assertive feeling as well yeah. as the one. And when you, if you were doing this on, on, a, on, a, on a launch monitor, it would be just, it would be like five miles an hour. It'd be, right, it wouldn't right, be that right. much, but you'd, okay. you'd be able to really feel it. Very good. So that, that's was the, that was the chest one. So Did you feel that? I'm thinking about adding distance with my chest, not with my hands. Or your, or your legs. Yeah. Or my legs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's where I'm going to get, lose all the good yeah. work. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's the one. So you're, starting, you're starting that little bit of chest speed. Yeah, that's it. And that's a nice feeling because that's giving me thought and proprioception over this chest bone as well. Yeah, yeah sure. So that's the bad one. It's not actually that going to end up it's being... fine. You just lost your legs slightly. When slightly, you say slightly. lose your legs, I'm going right, down, you've, dipping. You've gone this way. Mm. Right, so you haven't down enough, yeah? Okay. Like your right heel, really, when you pitch, if you've got all the great pitches, the, the right heel barely gets off the ground. Okay. So I, don't, I, don't, I don't need to move too much, I want to just stay. Yeah, so it's very much like you said, you know, that stake you, you talked about earlier. Just stay in you there. You create that and you turn around it. Okay. Now, if, you, if, you if that stake moves forward, you're mm. going to pull off your right, right mm. side too much. See, that's great. I mean, you played that really well. Would you, would, would you hit in this shot? Would you, obviously, you've got to take it to, like you said, ground condition, but would you see this as running out 10, 15 yards, or would you see it as going out the flag? I think because there's, what have we got, 30 yards of green, you probably yeah. want to use it. Okay. Again, most people are short on these shots. Yeah. Because they, they flight it too high. 
Yeah. Uh, you're flighting that around about probably launching about 25, 26 degrees, which yeah. is a nice flight. But most people are much higher than that. Yeah. And Would you say the pros from here are like trying to like land it and stop it dead? Pros would be th throwing it a little bit further. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and spinning it. We'll we'll get there one day. Yeah. Is that the right release there? Yeah. So this is this is uh, this is a release two, right? We're doing here. Yeah. But we're doing the release two green side. We were releasing it under mm. that way. Release two pitching. The shaft is releasing the same look, but you're feeling it draw at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because a, if, if you just do a standard green side release two with a fuller swing, you'll only really be able to hit that probably 25, 30 yards max. Mm. So it's the, it's the rotations of face that will get the ball okay. speed up a bit more. That's why aiming right and drawing it is a good way for you to feel the shot. There's a heavy one. A little shot. That's a little bit of the very old action where you would then okay. pull. Nice. That's the best Perfect. One probably. That's the Yard best of draw. One. Yeah. Yeah, much shallower. Okay, that's good. All right. We'll stop before uh, Greenkeeper gets her. <laughs> yeah, pick some of these up. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good, all right? That's very good. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's great. It's, uh, you can get your teeth into that. That was the juicy one there. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I quite like feeling the sand here. So I'd almost rather hit it heavier and harder. So like, like that. Is yeah. that how I feel most comfortable? Well, Whether or not that's the right thing to do or not. Well, that's good. I mean, I think because this sand's uh, quite damp here, sand that's actually well. a really good way of playing it, okay. like working across. You, the only I'm thing I'm all for on, on, um, on uh, firm. Yes. I'm all for on firm. Because that, that kind of, yeah, that, that steepens it a bit, you see. I just wonder if we could get your divot line. Your divot line's a little bit left, okay? Okay. So let's see if we can get that a little bit squarer. So if you just, you aim quite a long way to the left. So just, okay. let's just get you a little bit That's more. one thing I do. If I hit a good bunker shot, it might be within three foot, but it'll be three foot left or right. Yeah. It's and never some, straight. Does it land and sometimes spin to the right? It land and spin right? I think it does a bit of both, left yeah. and right, really. <laughs> right, just so square your feet up, aim more, aim more at the pin. That's, that's good. Now try and send the sand a little more forward. That was a better line. Yeah, that was a nicer line, wasn't it? I never really thought about that, just actually hitting a straight shot. Yeah. <laughs> well, well the, thing, idea. the problem is, right, if, 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 if you're working the sand quite a long way to the left, mm. you've actually got to hit it quite a lot harder mm. because the sand's obviously what carries the ball out. So if you look at the, the top bunk players, they don't really look like they're killing it, mm. okay, because they're sending the sand more forward. So you don't really want to be swinging too far across it. So just feel like you're going you're gonna to feel like you're aiming right, basically. I mean, right at the flag. Yeah, okay, so you're working the sand more towards the flag. A little bit wider than that. Nice wide stance. Okay. That's it. Well, that actually oh, do come out go. straight. Right on the left lip. Good. Oh, okay. Feels a bit foreign, but because it's natural, right? Yeah. Now, if you want to get a little bit more height and a bit more spin, let's apply mm. a bit more release into it now. Let's see if we can really start letting this club flow a little bit more and release through Almost it. Almost like a flowered leg or not? Yeah, flare it out. I go 45 so, degrees. So you're happy with me point. aiming straight and then doing that? Yes, exactly. So uh, your toe my, line's going to be a hair so open. Now but I like but that. But your heel line's going to be square. So now I like that. So you said a little bit more release? Yeah. Then that's better. Did you hear it? Yeah. It's so much, that's much because you've released yeah. it more, you use more of this part of the sole. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's not good. So I, I would just, I would just get wider. I would flare the foot out more to get more pressure. So straight out, then flare, not left. Exactly. Yeah, you got it. And then I would be down, like nice and low. That. Work the sand to the flag. Just release the the back of the sole a little bit more than you've been doing. And that was a little bit short in the backswing. Now. Is that why it came out lower? Yeah, and 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 it came out lower because you you had to handle the head too much. Okay. Now, when you start getting short in the backswing, you're going to go this way. Mm. So if we can start to really get it back, you can then start to really release it. Much longer. Mm. See, it helps with the release. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't believe I can hit him straight. Never even <laughs> thought about hitting him straight. I don't know why. I'll show you here. Look, if, if I if I if I stand uh, square on. Yeah. And just kind of watch the watch the. What's the pace? Okay, yeah, not yeah. hard at all, right? Yeah. But if I if I start standing like way to the left, I mean, you weren't way to the left, but you were quite. A yeah, bit yeah, yeah. Okay. Look how yeah, much harder yeah, I've got yeah, to hit yeah, it to get distance. a similar distance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's probably three times harder, and of course that's going to come through in your distance control, isn't it? Mm. And would you yeah. say that's exactly so? My technique, if I was at the back of the bunker and we were going to the next flag along, yeah, or two along. I would almost do the same thing, but with like a 50 or a 54. Yeah, totally brilliant. Okay, fine. Yeah. So you haven't got to do anything different, have you? No, exactly. And I sometimes go to even nine nines or whatever. Okay. You know, just really go to a strong If I was block. trying to force this golf club at, I mean, let's say, I don't want to get in anyone's way, but maybe one in the shadow yeah. with this club. So if I just do that, do that, and then I just think about I've got to nip it more, which is dangerous, right? Yeah, I mean, you've got to try and increase. 
It's just never, it's never going to get it's, there. It's a really tough shot. Yeah, yeah. And so you, that you put one of the best players in the world doing that, they're going to get one clean eventually. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just, a, it's a tough shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you get less loft in your hand. You don't have to increase your speed. You can manage your low point better, and you can then get the distance control yeah. better. But yeah, you're pretty good. I think just a little couple of tidy ups earlier with in terms of alignment and, and in terms of just deciding whether you're going to get the ball to run more with that sort of release, like a chunk and run style, or you're going to release it a bit more and get that higher one. We've got seven pins and we'll play all the shots from this position. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. So seven balls four, each. Seven balls, right? So this okay. is basically one ball pressure. Love so it. So we're, we're getting towards the golf course. We're taking the, the learning we've done and seeing if you can do it under the gun. You can obviously use whichever club you want now. Okay, okay so you get freedom of club yes, selection. Yes, exactly. Um, okay. And we have, yeah, we got, so we've got this tight pin here. Yep. We've got the long pin there. We've got the, the shorter one here. Okay, love it, so love it, love three, it, love it. that's three, four, five, six, seven. That's a really tricky one, obviously, over the slope. Yeah. So what do you think is a fair footage? If I was to give you a number of feet, yeah. and every time you hit a shot, I withdraw it. So let's yep. say I give you 100 feet and you hit the first one to 10 feet, you've got 90 left. Yeah, I understand. All right, so, so what do we, if we look at this from here. I think you want to get inside five foot here, don't you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so five. five. And we're going to go six there. Okay, so 11. Yeah. We're going to make it pretty tough, right? Yeah, I like it. Um, here I'm thinking three. Okay, wow. All right, so we're going to okay, go 14. 14. Shit. Uh, we're, going to go, we're going to go six to that one, because it's, it's got quite a tricky one. So 20. That's, that's 20. Back one, eight. Okay. Should we go eight feet? I think eight's fine, yeah. 28. Now that one's a tough one, right? So we're going to go for, I, th I think sort of, um, I think 12 feet would be a really good, like a really good result give there. Give us a buffer. And that's 40. And then we've got this really tricky one down here, okay, which again, we're going to give you sort of seven feet there. So just to round it up, I'm going to give you 50 feet. 50 right? feet. And you've got to try and, you can do it in any order, any order you want. You can go for these ones first or difficult ones first, but you've got 50 feet to spend. And let's see if you can complete it, okay? I love it. All right. Right. I'm going to go. start here. I like to okay. keep it chronological. Yeah. Um, you can I, can I, to talk me through I'm going to talk you through it. Yeah. And feel, can, you, can I have you as a caddy to like yeah. change let, my let's, mind? Let's, no, exactly. Let's <laughs> and make bad together. decisions. All right, okay. So from here, I always get it on the ground and run it, right? It's downhill. So yeah. I, I feel like it might be 50. 50 degree? Yeah. Um, Would you like me to see 54? I, I'm a bit worried about because it's downslope here. You might run away I'm, from I'm it. I'm a little bit worried. I think 54. Yeah. I, I like that decision. Because if, if you walk here, <laughs> just have a little stroll here. And yeah. When you are doing this, I, I try and have a little walk when you walk into your ball. But if you look at this, you see this slope here. Yeah. I'm a bit worried about a 50 kicking off this. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Because I'd have to land it so far back. Yeah. You know, I'm a big. While I do my lot of my shots is I'll stand at my landing zone. Yeah. And I visualise the height and I visualise it from here, the rollout. Yeah, good. And I, like I can that. see that now. So let's really get into the external thinking now. Okay, seeing the shot. Nice practice swing. Really replicating what you what you're trying to do. And do this properly. Yeah. This is, exactly. This is big. This is big guys. <laughs> this is pressure. Okay. So. So let's think about this. Normally I'm back foot, but I know now that's not the way to do it. I'm gonna go a little bit further forward. Feel free to end the point. Mm -hmm. I like your basics there. Right, if I do a swing rehearsal, you tell me what's off on that. Okay, no, I've that's got, good. I've, I think I've probably got to land that about here. Yep. And it's gonna roll in off the right, yeah? Perfect. Okay, easy. So I get a bonus point A little point bit I... of check. Well, if you hold one, I'll give you three feet back. Love that. Okay. A little bit of what, sorry? You get a little bit of check on this, okay? okay. And then it'll just roll out. Right, now. And I've got a wave, it's so well, bad there, it's unbelievable. Now you moved around, so let's just technically, you moved a little bit off the, off the ball there, right? But that's kind of what we were trying to do. The very first conversation we had, let's make it more forgiving. Mm. Now that wasn't a good strike. It was terrible. Right, but look, you fit it to what? Four Two, foot. That's, well, it's three feet. So you fit that to, I'm you not going to check, you fit, you we'll fit, take three. You fit that to three feet with yeah. a total miss hit. So, yeah. yes, listen, that's not how we want to play golf. No. But you're scoring. That's yeah. okay. Okay, let's see if we can get a better strike. So you're three feet, so you've got 47 left now. Okay. Right, so we're going to go to this bin here. So tell me about this one. Okay, so same lie, same position. So I see the, because it's uphill at the end, right? Yeah. So I feel if I play, I'm going to play this one probably, uh, my initial reaction is 50 to make sure it rolls up at the end. And with a 50, I can probably land it at the low point and then get it running. But maybe actually now I'm thinking about it, land it slightly halfway up the uphill to roll out. Cause it's gonna be quite steep at the end. Yeah, so, you, so you're absolutely, I'd be a bit worried about the ball spinning into that slope and stopping. So the 50 is without doubt. Oh, you sense. know what? I just used my 50 on that shot, not my 54. Okay. Well, that's the first That's, that's a mistake. That's the first mistake. You, you live and learn. You have to make sure you look at the bottom of the club first and see what number's on it. Okay, right. <laughs> right. 
Right, so we've got the right club in your hand this time. This time we've got 15, we're playing and 15. And we need to make sure, I mean, is it even a bit of wind there, do you feel that? Yeah, Even the wind does affect short game, by the mm, way, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. into the wind and we know it's up at the end. So we need to be playing a shot that's going to try and run out a little bit here. We don't want too much spin, okay? So it's what we did earlier, uh, but just... So um, back on my stance a little bit, or back, back heel? Or yeah. you still let me further forward than that? Just, just inside the back heel. Okay. Right, give yourself enough backswing, let's get it there. Played it really well. You played it really well. Get in. Wow. Three feet okay. again. Absolutely right. fantastic. You played that great. Thank you. So that's where you, it's a great example of just mentally you're just brilliant, like you saw the shot properly and you executed. Do you know right. what? I, I, I'm, I feel like I, again, haven't got confident enough that it's going to stop. My first reaction was I've hit way too hard. Yeah, but and you it see, it grabbed it, up. It grabbed up and it just trickled out like a pot. So that's good. So six feet. So what we're on, we're on uh, six. 40, 44 feet oh, right, now. 44, yeah, cool. So we've got here now, okay, so. My react, natural reaction, because of the uphill bit, is to stay with the 50. Um, yeah, and well, it's I, down and comes back up, doesn't it, here? Do I, do I, would I feel like I want to do a slicey one here? Not really. Don't, well, need don't to, get do too I? fancy. I okay. think it's, important, you know, it's just <laughs> it's good to we're, we're trying to get the job done, okay? So I, I would say it's a 50. It's going to break slightly left to right. Yeah. Round about here. It'll have a little bit of check, but they think we need this to run out, okay? So you've got the right club in your hand. Just play it, play it as we were. Middle of my stance? Yeah. Okay, again, it's running out really well. Get in. Oh, oh, I got a it. bit of a hop there, didn't I? You did. I got bit. a little bit of a hop off a little divot there. A little pitch Again, mark there. Again, it's so key. I've always say this: to get better at golf, you don't have to get better at good. You have to get your bad better. Yeah, totally. And that there was not. It was an average strike. It was an average it strike. Was an average it's strike. It's gone in the hole because you've got this margin for error now. Okay, so that's good. You get three feet back for that. So you've on uh, forty-seven. Yeah, there we go. Here we back go. In the game, right. <laughs> you know, right. Okay, so. Uh, Right, next pin, so... Okay. 50. Again, I can feel a lot of 50s coming in here. We're now getting to the longer ones until mm -hmm. we get to the end, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, I don't know, because this has got this side slope to it, the 50 could end up running away from me into that little bowl, maybe. Yeah, good. Could play it softer out towards the flag and let it die I in I mean, it's going gonna to break a lot left yeah. to right, and that's the important thing. And this is a message I would also get across to people, is most people, when they're chipping, don't really read the break and respect the break that much. And they'll sometimes play online. It'll just go from being stone dead to four feet right if they yeah. have just missed it at the end of the yeah. break. So you're absolutely right. You see, see this, the, the shadow of the flag? Yep. If you're right through the middle of that, maybe left edge of it actually, it's just going to come down. But I see a running shot landing almost level with this first pin and it will come around there. 50 or 54? I go 50 because okay, it, yeah. the, again, the last eight it's 10 It's got to run, isn't it? It's yep. got to run. And this is more, I'm not sure I'm completely understanding all the different releases yet but this, this is, is release one so this is a chip and run release no no release no. one front hit release so it's this way there okay okay I'm, so before i'm here yes now i'm here now right? we're there we're still getting the shaft slightly in front really good technique come on come on break. then do your job let's break all right wanted to didn't it okay you slightly pulled that but yeah you played it really well i thought okay. technically that was brilliant okay obviously you just missed the start line a bit left but yep. that's four feet away Take that. So 43. 43 feet. You're absolutely smashing it. But you've track, got two yes. really tough ones coming is up. Is there a penalty for missing the green? 20 feet. Oh, right. Why did I ask that? <laughs> Who does that to himself? <laughs> right, okay. So now we've. So the only reason I mention that is because now, I mean, it's not going to break as much, but this is for me. I, I could play this as a 50. The issue with the 50 here, I think, is my landing zone is on a slope. So my landing zone mm. is going to knock it offline. They'll never come back online from. Yeah, so that makes me have to end up aiming more left, which mm -hmm. runs the risk of it going left off mm -hmm. the green. So is this one maybe a 54 to check it a bit more? Or are you still happy with 50? It could be either here, couldn't it, do you think? Well, a 54 is, is, a, is a shot you just take the slope out and play and play it, but it, it's, a, it's a slightly riskier shot. Yeah. I like 50 here, but okay. I play the ball further back in your stance, actually, now. Not beyond the foot, though? No, no, no. Keep it inside, just on the, on the right heel, and that's just going to flight it down a little bit lower. Okay. And you might want to feel a little bit of toe turn, just, just to try and keep a the flight down. A little bit down. of toe like, turn. Just feel like the toes just draw in the ball. So a little bit of drawy one? Yeah, yeah. So what I probably will do here, if I'm taking this seriously, as I definitely am, I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to really look at, I'm going to, I'm going to, to move this. Yeah. I'm going to look at the landing zone here. And then actually I've noticed now that's a significant drop off. Yeah, it breaks a lot. But a bit of draw I like because it's going to hold the slope. If you kind of play that's this, true. it's going to kick off. So, so I'm looking for a landing I zone. I think you're here. landing it here. Landing up here, yeah? Yeah. 
one hop up and run. Yeah. Do you see, I didn't see it rolling out that much for landing. Yeah, well, if, if you're going to get it low enough and turning, it will do. Okay. If you can get it in the air a bit, it's going to stick. Okay. But this is also, and we'll use the 50, but this is where a, a 99 mid. might be better. You mm. see, just to really make sure we keep the flight down. Yeah, see, I would probably, maybe on this one, I would go to a P wave probably. Yeah. yeah. And the same principle. Yeah. Because I'm tempted to. Because you had the landing zone before the flag, didn't you? Before just, the shadow. Just on the shadow. You just go on the shadow. A bit of sand splash there by the shadow. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But key here is ball flight. We've got to control the flight. We've got to hit that lower window. Played a good shot. He's played a really good shot. Sit now, though. Look, it's gone a bit. You're right. See, that's... A, no, that's a good shot. Yeah. It's going to be a five, six. I think six, if we're six. being honest. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Six, thank you. So that's... That was good. You liked how you played that? Yeah. The thought flight, my way the flight that was one. good. Yeah. I think if I had committed to a shorter landing zone, like you said, that probably would have been even closer. Yeah. Uh, okay, right. Right, so this is the one then. 37. Yeah, 37 feet left. Now so this is a really interesting one. Let's have a look at this. Because there's a lot going on, isn't there? It's down and up and then back down again. If I land it here, it's going to go into that. It's also a low point. It's just going to get held up if I go yeah. too far back here. So maybe here's a reason to... I wouldn't be throwing it into this upslope. You wouldn't, no? No, because okay. that's going to be a tough shot. I think you've got to land it short the upslope, but again, manage the flight so it can creep up. And then just leap and then off. And come back down. Because even if I get it stopping here, it's going yeah. to get down there, yeah, isn't gravity's it? gravity's going to work it down, isn't Worst it? Worst case, I've got an uphill putt yeah. from there. I don't like flying lofty clubs into upslopes. I think that... I Interesting. Think I'd, I'd, I'd always want to When you say short. lofty club, what are you like qualifying? 54, 54 plus, you know. You, this is a 50 again, do you think? Yeah, 50 is good. Okay. Yeah. That's gonna, we're going to work this, the ball up the slope rather than worry about what it's going to do into the slope. Okay, so I immediately think about chest bone, heavy heavy feet, yeah. ball position like the last one, slightly towards the back, yeah. and then that same release two. Release one. Release one, sorry, yeah. yeah. So we're going to go low. Okay, yeah. now, yeah, your line here is... Sort of at the eight, flag? No, you're going to go a little bit, six, eight feet right of the pin. Okay, yeah. You see that tree that's sort of yep. going to the left? Yep. Just right of that. You're landing, it's that black dot on the green. Yep, you landed there. Level about, there. Well, just a little further on from there, but okay. we've got to get the ball flight. This needs a bit of pace to it just to get it up there, yeah? So you undo the pace with my chest, maybe? Yes. Okay, I see it, I see it. I see it, just got to do it now. Contact was good, you landed at exactly where I said. And it's working its way up and it's breaking down there. And okay. We take, we, we take that, okay? Yeah. What, what's that? It's probably 12, uh, no, probably actually a bit faster, about 10 feet. 10 foot, I think it's about 10 foot, yeah. yeah. Um, so how could we have got that a little bit better? So we, I think in hindsight, yeah. I would play a pitching wedge. Yeah. And obviously I got it a bit jabby, uh -huh. which made me probably get the wrong groove a bit. Yeah. So then that wrong groove has given me not quite as much release up and, the hill, which made it break earlier. A bit, yeah. So I think the area club selection, I would have just gone for yet less loft to make sure we, did, we weren't going to worry about the spin and it was going to get up the hill a little bit more. But I love the fact we're getting really picky, but a really difficult shot there to yeah. 10 feet. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, which yeah, is, yeah, which yeah. Is, which is fantastic. Okay. Right, so, so we're on for doing this. So now, now we've got the pin here. Well, I just get it on the green. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> which exactly, is yeah. not easier said than done on this hole. Right, a lot going on here as well. I mean, I think you're gonna have to use a fringe a bit here. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I could hit this club. I could putt it, I could nip it. I could probably do anything here, right? The mm -hmm. good thing I've got going for me is I've got a bit of a backstop. Mm -hmm. You have, you've got about 20 feet of upslope behind the pin there. So. I feel like it's not a 50. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so interesting. I'd, I honestly could see me playing this to here, but the problem is you get it too clean and it into the grain a little bit and it stays here. And it can pop right on you. Um, the, the jabby one, the, the sort of more flippy one could maybe land here, or I could probably even land it here. I'm, I'd be, I'm really torn on this. I, 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 think, I think we're going to go for 54 here because I want you to get this as close as you can. Okay. I don't, we just want you to Let's complete the challenge, right? So we're going to go 54, yep. and you're going to play a release one, right? You don't need to release this too much here because the lie's fairly tight, but you're going to land it. So let me just get it. Release one is like the more punchy one, right? Yes, that's it. That's and then it. release two is one oh, where you... Cool. Yeah. And is you it just it. they get progressively more? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then you just release it more and more, right? Now, here. Okay. okay, but low with check, it'll check and just roll out nice. That far left. I'm gonna make sure. Yeah, maybe just a little bit tighter than that. Little and that little dot. That. It's here. It's right There's here. a little dot but, but towards the flag, that sort of line. It's here. There, yeah? yeah? Okay. Landing in that at like knee height. It's going, in, yeah, that's it, low to mid height, and it's just a little bit of check we want. We want the sort of yeah, okay. second bounce on the green. Loosey goosey. 
And you're hitting that a little bit hard. Yeah, you've played, played all right, you just hit a little bit hard. But there's the backstop and that's what, 15 feet. Okay. Disappointing, but I've completed the task. You have completed. What was your, what was the total footage there then? 20, it's 15. Yes. Yeah, 15. 15. So, so, you 15 did, so, you did 30, so you did it in 35 feet. Yes. So 35 divided by seven. Yeah. It's five. Yeah. So it's an so average, you're of, five an average of five feet, which and is pretty good. Make percentage of five foot. 80% yeah, yeah, like and you that. can see how you can play some mass into your short game yeah. so if you look at Mull you're definitely getting up and down you're definitely getting up and down yeah. well you hold that one yeah you, you were going to hold that one as well and then you've basically got you've got two putts which yeah. you, you hopefully might make one and so you've probably got up and down out of those seven realistically at least five times which is, five or six which times, is fairly decent I'd which say. is good yeah. and the good thing there is you didn't pure all of them but you didn't really have a, a real a real horror yeah. shot yeah, yeah, they're all, yeah. They're all so my final question to you then is why seven why seven because just seven, seven flags. Because seven so it's not. So you can, you can and so open what, that up. Absolutely, and you right. can do this. And don't think you need. Because some people say, "Oh, you, it's all right for you. You've got this fantastic short game area." Yeah. But if you've even if you've got a green, just put some head covers down and do the same thing. You know, you don't need to be playing to a pin. But I think people do this game, and then if we're going to do it again, you would then try and beat that. Or you do out of the rough, for example. Do it different. Yeah. And, and then the other thing I'll do sometimes is I'll use. Can you do every every pin with a seven iron? Yeah. Every yeah, pin yeah. with a nine I iron. I love that. And then figure out actually which club is the right club to use to each pin. I love that. Because there's a couple of missed clubs we had there. Mm. And, and then at the end, just use whatever club you want. And it's just a really great way of learning, and it's got a bit of competition to it as well. Guys, you know how much I love short game. I've made this video, I hope you did enjoy it. If you want to continue on your journey of short game, first of all, I very much recommend you do that. And then this is the man to be following. I watch your stuff on TikTok. You're uploading in lots of places now, right? Mm. So all the links to Dan's channels are going to be down below. You're going to be getting regular tips from this man for all the different things we've covered on today. So make sure you get down there and follow him across all the social medias and get in the comments and let me know what you're going to be working on in your short game and let me know how you get on as well. Thank you for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more. We'll see you again soon.